Uh, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy through education and advocacy. Thank you for joining us tonight with Oakland Uptown Rotary. Here's Peggy Graybill to, to give us the pros and cons of each ballot measure. All right. Um, so um, we do actually have uh, two, two branches, basically, or two roles. So we do uh, educate and are nonpartisan in that capacity, but we also advocate. Um, so we do take positions on issues. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm here in the role of education. So in, in part of, of you learning how to evaluate the pros and cons is to realize that we do have supporters and opponents on the slides uh, titled pros and cons uh, and what they have to say about it, but they may not necessarily be true in what they say. Each side hopes you to win your vote, so some may try to mislead you or scare you. So how to evaluate the measures? Which side do you agree with, pro or con? Who is really behind it? Or follow the money. Is it a single topic or more complicated? Today we'll be talking about uh, the 12 state issues and then we have four, <coughs> four that are related to Oakland and then two related to Alameda County. Looking at the propositions is different than a school test. You can, it's okay sometimes to not mark something on the ballot, to go ahead and leave it blank if you're not sure how you want to. Okay, California state propositions. Here's Prop 14. These are bonds for stem cell research. This is a citizen initiative uh, bond. Here's the background. In 2004, federal funding for stem cell research was prohibited. So California voters approved three billion. The original money has almost been spent. Federal funding is now allowed. The effect is that it permits five billion in bonds to be repaid by the California General Fund. And the money is for medical research and education. Money given out by grants to educational, nonprofit, and private research groups. Here's the budget effects. Repaying five billion for bonds plus interest from the general fund would cost about 260 million a year over about 30 years. The total cost would be about 7.8 billion. Who's for it and who's against it? For it, in the cat this category here, we have the Robert Klein Corporation, Dagmar Dolby, Juvenile Diabetes Research, and S. Sukimoto, Open Philanthropy Action Fund, University of California Regents, and 97 organizations, all mainly medical. Let's see if we got any more in that. Uh, nope. Against it, San Diego Union Tribune, Bakersfield.com News, and Howard Jarvis Taxpayers. The people who are pro for, or in favor of this do say this research will help fight diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's, etc. has done much basic research, 300 papers published, and continue this important research. 
Those who are opposed say, California has higher priorities now with so many people out of work. Only two treatments have been approved so far. People on the board are from institutions that receive grants. What does your vote mean? Yes means pay to continue this California stem cell research. No means no more California bond money for stem cell research. Prop 15. This is related to commercial property taxes for schools and communities. This is a citizen initiative for a constitutional amendment. Here's the background. In 1978, Prop 13, businesses and residential property tax was limited to 1% of the purchase price. Tax increases limited to 2% per year. Market value has risen, risen much more. Business property usually owned longer. So two thirds of the tax benefit has gone to businesses, not homeowners. The effect will be that the business property over 3 million would be reassessed at market value. The process would be phased in gradually. Business property would then be reassessed every three years at current market value. Here are the exemptions. Rates would not increase on homes. Living spaces are not affected, even if apartments are owned by large landowners. Small businesses will be exempt that are under 3 million. And agricultural or religious land will be exempt. Here's the budget effects. It would raise 6.5 to 11 0.5 billion per year in commercial property values. After the money after costs would be spent 60% to local governments and 40% to school districts and community colleges. Right? This would raise per student funding by $100 per year. Those that are in favor of it, California Teachers Association, Union, Chan Zuckerberg Group, San Francisco Foundation, California Federation of Teachers, the California Democratic Party, Oakland City Council, school districts in LA, San Francisco and Oakland, League of Women Voters in California, and Mi Familia Vota. 42 million has been contributed by these groups. Those that are against it, California Business Roundtable, California Business Properties, California Taxpayers Association, Next, Next Era Energy, and Public Storage. Also, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers, Black and Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, California Grocers Association, California Small Business Association, and Restaurant Association. Those who are against it have spent 34 million as of October 5th. Pro says wealthy companies should pay based on what property is worth now instead of original price. Prop 15 would help pay for schools, fire, and other important services. Khan says, higher business taxes will raise the cost of everything people buy, food, gas, and healthcare. Prop 15 will hurt smaller businesses. What does your vote mean? Yes means raise business property taxes. No means don't raise business property taxes. Prop 16, return to affirmative action. The full title is repeal proposition 209 affirmative action amendment. 
from this is from the state legislature and a constitutional amendment. Here's the background. In 1996, Prop 209 forbid the state to grant special treatment based on race or sex. The effect would allow California state government to consider diversity in race, ethnicity, or sex in public employment, contracting, and public education. Who's for it? M. Quinn Delaney, Kaiser Parmanente, Patricia Quillian, California Teachers Association, and ACLU, and 377 other organizations. They have put 14 million so far in support of Prop 16. Against it is Students for Fair Admissions, a Texas group, and then 56 other organizations. They have spent one million to go against the proposition. Pro says, help make up for long-standing discrimination. All Californians deserve property opportunity and education. Khan says, don't favor one racial group over another. The state should treat everyone the same. Yes means permit state affirmative action. No means forbid state affirmative action. Prop 17. Prop 17 allows payrollees to vote. This is from the state legislature and it's a constitutional amendment. Current law is that felons can vote only after completing both prison and parole. Prop 17 effect, felons could vote when out of prison. Parole is often three more years. Those in favor of it, P. Quillian and S. Pritzker, Ultimad, California A. Clue, Heising Simmons Foundation, California Nurses Association, California Democratic Party, California League of Women Voters. One dollar has been spent in favor of it. Who's against? California Republican Party and Bakersfield Californian. And they have spent zero money so far. Oop. Pro says, People on pay, parole pay taxes. They should be able to vote. Voting connects people to their communities, so it increases public safety. People, those uh, who oppose it say, people should complete parole before voting. Parole time is for criminals to prove that they have changed. What does your vote mean? Yes means it allows parolees to vote. No, don't allow parolees to vote. Prop 18, Prop 18 allows some 17 year olds to vote. It's from the state legislature for constitutional amendment. The effect, it would allow 17 year olds to vote in the primary election if they will be 18 by the upcoming general election. Who's in favor of it? Committee for California Future, Kevin Mullen First Assembly, California Conversation Voters, Con Conservation Voters, California Nurses Association, and uh, SEIU Union. And so far, uh, they have spent 500,000 in support of it. Those against it, Election Integrity Project of California and San Diego Union Tribune, they have spent no money against it. Pro says this will help increase voter participation. 
voters should be able to choose candidates for the November ballot. Khan says, 17 year olds are not legal adults, not mature enough to make important decisions. Teachers and counselors will influence their vote. What does your vote mean? Yes, allow some 17 year olds to vote. No, don't allow some 17 year olds to vote. Prop 19, this is property tax changes, home protection for seniors, severely disabled families and victims of wildfire or natural disasters act. This is from the state legisl legislator for constitutional amendment. The current situation, when senior homeowners move, the tax value of their next home remains the same as the old home, rather than rising to the market value of the new home. This allows a tax transfer. So the value of the new home is, if it's current or same, it'll be less or same or more under Prop 19. So this is a transfer to 10 counties or any California. Oh, and for Prop 19, it would be for any California county. Number of transfers in your life that allow you to apply this. Currently, a senior or disabled or a senior or disabled person or someone who's uh, been displaced by disaster can use this one time. Under Prop 19, you can do it one more time for disaster displaced. And it also, whoops, applies to seniors or disabled under Prop 19. Current, current situation. And this is related to inheritance. When a home or a farm is inherited by children, the old lower tax value continues. The effect of Prop 19, family must live there full time, can't rent it out. After February 2023, tax on this family land increases if value is over 1 million plus. So here's the effect. It's kind of confusing. Effect on inherited homes of high value. If the market value has now increased 1 million above the assessed value, then uh, there would be the new assessed value. And the initial purchase, then there's the assessed value, originally over 2% per year inflation, and then the inherited is right here. So it is indeed very complicated. Yep. Okay, so uh, another way of looking at this is the percent of million dollar homes right now that are in different areas. In Los Angeles in 2017, 18% were um, uh, affected. And then in 2018, that's 20%. In Oakland in 2017, it's 25%. And, and now it's 31% in Oakland in 2018. In San Francisco, there was 67% of the homes and now it's 81%. So that's where that information was drawn from. It was USA Today, that, that article right there. Budget effects. Cities would get less property tax income from a few homes, but more money from many homes would provide more money for schools. 
Some new tax money must go to firefighting, which limits bu budget flexibility. Those that are for it, California Association of Realtors, National Association of Realtors and Firefighters and the California Democratic Party. Those against it, it's Howard Jav Jarvis Taxpayers, East Bay Times, Mercury News, Los, Ange Lost. Los Angeles Times, and Orange County Register. Those who are for it have put in 41 million so far, and those against it, a half million as of October 5th. Pros say people should not pay higher taxes on the next home if they lose their home in a disaster. So that's closest loophole on inherited homes that are rented out 60% of them in LA County. Khan says voters rejected this tax increase in 2018. It could hurt families who cannot pay higher taxes on an inherited family home. What your vote means. Yes, change the property transfer laws. No, means keep current property tr tax transfer laws. Prop 20. This is stronger laws against crimes and, and paroles. It's a citizen initiative uh, related to state law. The effects would be required DNA samples for state and federal databases if convicted of drug possession, shoplifting, etc. It would punish some petty theft as felonies. So a conviction for shoplifting of 200. 50 to 950 value could mean three years in jail. The cut back on early release from prison if convicted of some felonies. Could raise the costs of courts, jails, and prisons by tens of millions of dollars per year. Those in favor of it. Uh, California Correctional Peace Officers, Association for the LA Deputy Sheriffs, LA Police Protection League, FSB Core Strategies, that's a public influence organization, and Al Albertsons, Albertsons Safeway, Albertsons and Safeway. Against it is private individuals, Heising and Simmons Fund, a clue of Northern California and Governor Brown Committee. Those in favor have spent four million so far. Those against it have spent six million as of October 5th. Pro says California laws aren't tough enough. Don't let violent criminals get early parole. DNA from drug possession or shoplifting would help solve more serious crimes such as rape. Khan says California has some of the toughest laws against violent crime. Millions of dollars for prisons could be spent on education, health care, or affordable housing. It undoes voter supported prison reforms of the past 10 years. What does your vote mean? Yes, means make laws harder on crime. No, means keep the laws the same. Prop 21, this allows more rent controls. Actual title is Local Rent Control Initiative. It is a citizen's initiative to change the state law. Current law, is that state law limits how much cities can limit rent increases or impose rent controls. The background, one third of California renters pay 50% of their income for housing. High rents add to homelessness. Effects of Prop 21, 
allow cities to limit rent increases in more situations. So uh, the changes would be in, in the age of the rental, that currently 30 years old, in Prop 21, there's no limits. New tenants uh, increase will be allowed any any amount current and then 5% per year for the first three years or a total of 15%. Ongoing tenants would, will get a cost of living, who have a cost of living rise. The current, it's the same, yes and yes. It, the exempt, exemptions, no limits on it. Single family home currently for Prop 21, if they own only one or two residential units. Financial effects. You could lower city income because landlords would pay less in business taxes because they collect less rent. Who's in favor? Uh, AIDS Healthcare Fund. I, I think that's fun. Uh, California Nurses Association and 96 organizations, California ICLO, California Democratic Party, Dolores Yacha Fund, LA Urban League, an eviction defense network. Who's against? Business Roundtable, Apartment Association of Orange County, California Business Prop Association, Apartment Association of LA, California Rental Housing Association, and 146 other organizations. Those who are in favor of it have spent 24 million. Those against it, 41 million as of October 5th. Pro says rent control will help families and seniors stay in their homes. Prop 21 is fair. It guarantees that landlords can still earn a profit. Con says rent control can cause evictions, less maintenance, and fewer new buildings. Prop 21 will make housing less available during these hard economic times. What does your vote mean? Yes means enlarge the options for rent controls. No means keep rent controls the same. Prop 22. This is related to app-based drivers as contractors and labor policies initiative. So this is a citizen's initiative related to state law. The background is that Lyft, Uber, et cetera, want drivers to be independent contractors. California law, legislature and courts say they are employees. Lyft, Uber, et cetera, are under court order to comply and are appealing in court. The effect, if passed, Drivers as independent contractors would get 120% of minimum wage, some reimbursement for health insurance, and some help with car maintenance. Independent contractors don't get overtime pay, paid for wait time between rides, paid sick leave, workers' compensation insurance, state unemployment insurance, and the right to unionize. Those who are in favor of this are Lyft, Uber, DoorDash, Instacart, Postmates, and 107 organizations of California Black and, and California Black Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and California Small Business Association. Those against it are the Teamsters, the United Food Workers International, CEIU Union, and 46 other organizations that include uh, Nurses Association, Teachers Association, Mi Familia Vota, 
Gig Workers Rising and Sierra Club. Those who are for have spent 200 million. Those against have spent 5 million. Pro se, drivers want to be independent contractors. And forcing companies to hire employees would end hundreds of thousands of jobs. These, the cons say these companies don't want to pay basic benefits, as employee drivers would like would get benefits they deserve, such as sick pay and unemployment. What your vote means? Yes means app drivers are contractors which means that companies and voters make employment law. No means app drivers are employees. That means legislature and courts make employment law. Prop 23, more regulations for kidney dialysis clinics. This is a citizen's initiative to change the state law. The background is there are about 550 dialysis clinics in California. Dialysis patients now live longer, so the number is increasing. Davita Kidney Care in Frisinius Medical Care own most of the for-profit clinics in California. Service Employees International Union would like to unionize these companies, improve care, and cap company profits. The effects, it would require a licensed doctor on site during treatment. During emergency doctor shortage, nurse and physician's assistant is okay. Would have to accept patients regardless of payment method Medicare, Medi-Cal, or private pay. And would need state permission to cut services or close. Who's in favor of the SEIU union? And they're spending six million so far, or as of October 5th. Who's against it? The Vita Resnius Medical. No, these are the two largest dialysis companies. California Medical Association, California American Vets, and California American Legion. They have spent two, two million so far. Pro se, dialysis is dangerous. A doctor should always be there. Prop 23 prevents financial discrimination. Khan says, Prop 23 would take doctors away from the hospitals and emergency rooms. Doctors are not necessary and will cost more, so some clinics may have to close. What does your vote mean? Yes means more regulations on dialysis units. No means keep the laws the same. Prop 24. This is about consumer privacy. The actual title is Consumer Personal Information Law and Agency Initiative. This is a citizen's initiative to change the state law. The background is internet companies commonly collect, store, and sell personal information to advertisers. Such information may include exact cell phone and GPS locations, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, private internet messages, and some health information such as pregnancy. In 2018, the California legislature passed an internet privacy protection law that allows consumers to learn what data is stored to request deletion and to opt out of their information being sold. The effects of Prop 24, consumers would have the right to correct misinformation held by websites and don't share or sell my private information from this website. Companies would be allowed to charge more to provide privacy 
collect, share, or share your information if you go out of state. Creates California Consumer Protection Agency. Who's for it? Alistair McTaggart, American Federal State uh, Federation of State Employees, California Building and Construction, California Professional Firefighters, California NAACP, and California Peace and Freedom Party. Who's against it? Consumer Federal Federation of California, California Consumer and Privacy Advocacy, California for Real Privacy, A Clue of California, California Nurses, League of Women Voters, and Dolores Hierta Foundation, and Public Citizen. Those who are for it have spent four, five million as of October 5th. Those against it have spent 113,000. Pro says, stop tech companies from tracking everything we do online and higher and faster fines for violations. Create a new privacy protection agency. Khan says, loopholes in these 52 pages give too, too much power to tech companies. Companies may charge more for privacy protection. Consumers have to opt out one website at a time. What does your vote mean? It changes the 2018 law. If you say yes, if you say no, take time to evaluate the 2018 law. Prop 25. Replace cash bail with risk assessments. This is a citizen initiative referendum. Background. In 2018, the California legislature passed a law in ending cash bail. The law has not yet gone into effect because opponents blocked it by filing for a referendum vote. This referendum asked voters to accept or reject this law. There we go. Current situation. If suspects are allowed home while waiting their court date, bail bonds help assure they will return on time. If suspects pay bail and return on time, they get their money back. This system puts a heavier burden on low income suspects. If they can't afford bond, they wait in jail or borrow from a bail bond dealer and pay a non-refundable fee of about 10%. If they return on time, they are proven innocent and they don't get back the 10% borrowing fee. The effect of Prop 25, where suspects wait for court date would depend on risk to others and risk that suspect won't return to court. If there's a high risk, wait in jail. If there's a low risk, wait at home. If there's a medium risk, judge and risk assessment decide jail or home. Tracking device or probation check-in could be required. Who's for it? Action Now Initiative, Private Citizens, SEIO Union, Next Gen California, California Public Defenders Association, California Democratic Party, California League of Women Voters, California Teachers Association, and the SEIU Union. Who's against it? Triton Management Service, Lexington National Insurance, Bankers Insurance, Financial Casualty, AIA Holdings, Bail Agent Associations, many county sheriffs, California NAACP and Black and Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Howard Jarvis Taxpayers. Those who are for it have spent eight million, those against it, nine million. Pro says decisions will be based on public safety, not ability to pay. The current system is unfair. 
If you can't pay, you stay in jail. Khan says, releasing people from jail will make communities less safe. Decisions may be made by computer programs which have historically discriminated against African Americans. Budget effects. Setting up the new assessment system will be expensive. Overall, costs lower with fewer people waiting in jail. What does your vote mean? Yes means ends the bail bonds. No means keep bail bonds. Okay, now we're on to local measures. Okay. QQ uh, allows youth to vote in school board elections. And this is a city charter amendment. The background. Voting for a school board is limited to voters age 18 plus. Campaign led by students, youth age 16 and 17 should have a say. School board decisions affect that what school board decisions affect them directly. Similar measures passed in Berkeley in 2016 are yet to be implemented. The effect, allow the city council to adopt this plan. It was placed on the ballot by the city council. Fiscal effects, none right now. Estimated, seven to 10,000 additional costs for every school board election every two years. It would depend on the implement the implementation details. Allow the youth to go, allow the youth to vote in school board elections. Arguments four. School board would be more responsive to student needs. Voting at an earlier age sets lifelong patterns, will increase overall voter participation. Arguments against school budgets, decisions are complicated. There are other ways to increase voter participation. Supporters, or include Northern California, Oakland Kids First, Lucas Brecca and Meisner, Keith Brown, Oakland Education Association, James Harris, OUSD Board Director, and Rebecca Kaplan, Oakland City Council. Opponents, none filed. Okay, RR removes money limit on fines for breaking city laws. This would be a change in the city charter amendment. The background is the upper limit on fines in the city charter as a specific amount. Today it is 1,000, set back in 1968. Major violations like illegal dumping are undeterred by small fines. City Council needs flexibility in setting fine limits. The effect, no change in current fines. City Council is allowed to set a new fine limit after a public hearing. Placed, it's placed on the ballot by the City Council. Fiscal effects, none right now. If fines increase, could raise more revenue. RR removes the money limit on fines from breaking city laws. Arguments four. Resetting the limit is long overdue since it has not been changed since 1968. Needs flexibility to set fines at levels that effectively deter major violations of laws. Against. Concern that city council could impose unlimited fines. This measure is not necessary to deal with illegal dumping. Supporters are Dan Talb of Oakland City Council, Ken Houston, the Beautification Council, 
Angela Nino Golden Gate Community Association, Margaret Gordon, West Oakland, Environmental Indicators Projects, and Noel Gallo of the Oakland City Council. Opponents, Marcus Crawley, Alameda County Taxpayers Association, Thomas Bruman, Alameda County Act Tax Payers Association, Steve Kozlerich, uh, o Oakland voter, Terry Lutz, Oakland voter, and Ron Trowbridge, Oakland voter. No money spent. Okay, we've got now S1, extend the police commission independence. This is a city charter amendment. Background is Measure LL 2016, Oakland Police Commission, and then oversight of Oakland Police Department. Community Police Review Agency investigate misconduct. Who can hire staff for the commission, the commission or the city? In fact, it authorizes police commission to hire and supervise staff and establish office of inspector general. The scope extended it covers area identified for improvement by federal oversight. It's placed on the ballot by the city council. Fiscal effects, additional budget for commission staff, legal advisors and investigators. Arguments four, police commission needs to be fully staffed to be functional and effective. Police commission will be empowered to sustain the progress made during federal oversight of the police after the oversight ends. And no argument against. Supporters, Reverend George, Dr. George Cummings, Faith in Action, East Bay, Rebecca Kaplan, Oakland City Council, Mary, Mariano Contreras, Latino Task Force, Dan Kalb, Oakland City Council, and Regina Jackson, Police Commission. Opponents? None. Okay, we are now on why Oakland schools repair safety improvement, 735 million bond. Background is the Oakland schools have significant repair and improvement needs. Effects would be classroom repair and school safety improvements and upgrade classrooms, science labs and technology improve student safety and security, repair bathrooms, electrical systems, plumbing and sewers, improve energy efficiency and earthquake safety. It's not to be used for salaries or other school operating expenses. It's placed on the ballot by Oakland Unified School District Board. Fiscal effects. 735 million in a 30 year bond. It would raise 48.5 million a year for 30 years. Bond repayment by increase in property tax. After all bonds are sold, $60 per 100,000 of assessed valuation. Needs 55% to pass. Supporters, Judy London, OUSD Board President, Deborah Scheffler, President of the League of Women Voters, Pastor George Cummings, Faith in Action, East Bay, Zach Unger, President, Oakland Firefighters, Local 55, Alejandra Chiesa, Director, Truster, Trust for Public Lands. Opponents. Marcus Crawley, President, Alameda County Taxpayers Association, Thomas Rubin, VP, Alameda County Taxpayers Association, Terry Lutz, member, Ronald Trowbridge, member, Steve Causal Reach, member. 
Arguments four, our students need and deserve clean, safe learning environments. Projects developed and prioritized with community participation and oversight. Technology upgrades to support distance learning, social distancing during pandemic. Ensure schools have funds to provide the match needed to secure state funding. Arguments against, bonds are a bad way to pay for school repairs and taxes are already too high. W, increase Alameda County sales tax by half cent. Background, homelessness is an acute problem, doubled in the last four years, that will become worse under the economic downturn caused by COVID. In fact, more money in the Alameda County General Fund Housing and services for those experiencing homelessness, mental health services, job training, social safety net, and other general fund services. Placed on the ballot by Alameda County Board of Supervisors. Fiscal effects, sales tax increase for 10 years. Background, homelessness is an acute problem, doubled in the last four years that will become worse under the economic downturn calls caused by COVID. The fact is more money in Alameda County General Fund, housing and services for those who experience homelessness, mental health services, job training, social safety net, and other general fund services. It's placed on the ballot by Alameda County Board of Supervisors. Fiscal effects is sales tax increase for 10 years. Fiscal effects is 0.5% increase for 10 years. Oakland sales tax 9.25% up to 9.75%. Estimated to raise 150 million a year, could be less if sales are down, needs 50% to pass. Supporters, Home Together 2020 organization, Bishop Macklin, senior pastor at Glad Tidings Church in Hayward, Gloria Bruce, ex executive director, East Bay Housing Organizations, Mo Wright, principal of BBI Construction, board chair, Everyone Home, Liz Barella, executive director, Building Futures with women and children, and Sandra Johnson, treasurer, United Seniors of Alameda County. Opponents, Marcus Crawley, president, Alameda County Taxpayers Association, Thomas Rubin, VP of Alameda, County Taxpayers Association, Terry Lutz, member, Peter Kabeler, member, and Steve Kozlerich, member. And it doesn't look like they're spending any money. Argument for homelessness is a critical issue and requires additional funding. The economic downturn created by COVID could worsen homelessness without additional funding. Funding will help also those at risk of becoming homelessness. Homeless. Our sales tax is already too high, according to those against at 9.25%. It looks like they didn't, no one spent any money so far. Oh, concern that funds will not be used for homeless services, but on other needs is another argument against. And sales tax hurt poor people more, especially during an economic downturn. Here's B. This is to extend utility tax in unincorporated areas of Alameda County. Here's the background. It applies to unincorporated areas of Alameda County only. It's a utility tax on electricity, telephone, natural gas, and cable, and, to be, and began in 1992. It, it's extended every four years, raised in 2008 to 6.5% for 12 years, and it will expire in June 2021. It does not apply to incorporated cities like Oakland, 
but state law requires all county residents vote on the tax. The effect, extend this tax by 12 years to June 2033. No change to the rate of 6.5%. Is placed on the ballot by Alameda County Board of Supervisors. Fiscal effects extend tax by 12 years. Supporters, Melissa Wilk, Auditor Controller, Juan LA Assessor, Ken Carbone, Castro Valley Mac, Jennifer Ong, Eden Area Mac, Diane uh, Whitler, San Lorenzo Village, and Homes Association. Opponents, Marcus Crawley, President Alameda, County Taxpayers Association, Thomas Rubin, VP Alameda County, Taxpayers Association, Cherry Lutz, member, Peter Cavalier, member, and Steve Kozlerich, member. Arguments four. The tax has been collected since 1992 and will provide approximately 12 million final services, public safety, libraries. Preserves tax exemptions for qualifying low income residents and those using gas and electricity for life support systems. The argument against, the county can spend revenues from these general taxes any way it wants. There is no real accountability for how these tax revenues will be spent. All right, that's it. Thank you for being a voter. If you want to know more, go to Voter's Edge. That's the place to go. You can track your ballot there. Vote with the league here. In other words, um, if you want to see where the league stands on some of these, which I've already stated tonight. Well, Peggy, I want to thank you for your time and your presentation. Um, by showing our thanks, uh, we are donating vaccines in your name to our N Polio initiative. Yay! Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Rotary has a mission to end polio now. We became polio free in Africa, I think, was it last month? Is it two months ago? Time is going by really fast. <laughs> um, and it's only existing in two countries, um, Afghanistan and Pakistan. And in fact, this Saturday is a world polio day. So it's even more special to donate these in your name. Uh, thank you so much to you and the League of Women Voters for all you're doing in educating um, voters and having people feel more empowered with their vote. Yes, thank you. Rotary!